All right, Andrew, thank you so much for coming to the Unhustle podcast. I really, really appreciate you sharing our views with the Unhustle community, and I'm super excited to have found you and all the important work that you're doing in the world. So welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Why don't we kick it off with this amazing experiment that you did back in 2018 and uh, what, uh, how that worked out for you? Well, in 2018, we uh, implemented a four-day week at my company. Uh, when we talk four-day week, we talk 180-100. The concept is 100% pay, 80% time, provided we get 100% productivity. And we've been doing it since 2018 with, with fantastic success, both in terms of the productivity of the business and also the, the wellness, the the mental health benefits and all of those things that fall through to the employees as well. So you're trying to tell me that employees went to a four day work week and they were able to not only maintain their productivity, but there were other benefits from that without cutting their pay, right? You were paying them the same amount of money. Yeah. And critically, we're not asking them to work longer hours on the four days that they work. This is a four normal days. What prompted me to do this, quite simply, was I read this article on a plane that said that the Brits were only productive for two and a half hours a day and the Canadians, in the particular study, for one and a half hours a day. And I thought, why is that happening? Is that happening in my business? And therefore, what would happen if I did this deal? If I said to my staff, I will give you more time off, I need to get the same amount of productivity. But what I'm looking for you to do is to rethink how you work, how you do things, um, eliminate unproductive time, if you will. And if you can do that, then you'll get another, you know, 40 days off a year. And that was the deal that I gave to my staff. And what kind of business we're talking about here? Well, we're in, we're in legal services. We are New Zealand's largest statutory trust company. Now, that means... We supervise the capital markets. That's a big part of our business. Uh, we are the largest philanthropic trustee in the company country. We're also the, the largest private client trust company in the country. So we have retail outlets. We have call centers. We have legal teams. Uh, we have professionals. So broadly, anything that you would do in any sort of legal company or indeed financial services business, we sort of do so we are that's the best way to look at us and how many people what, what is that company approximately we have 254 staff that work in the business uh, currently we have about 76 percent of them are working on the four-day week policy uh, we have a couple of rules when you join the company you you work five days for a little period of time that's so you can understand the job you have to do in five days. But more importantly, so when you go down to four, you recognize what you've got to do, but the benefits of actually having four days over five. And also, bizarrely, we reckon about 15% of the company at any point in time will say they don't want to work a four-day week. They'd rather want to work a five-day week. Why do you think that is? For some people, work is really essential. You know, going to work is part of their fabric. It's uh, what defines them. It's their social life. Um, some people like to also amble through a day the way they, they, they currently are doing. They don't want to necessarily have that feeling of being more productive. And we're pretty comfortable with that. We allow our staff to do four days or they can do five. And our policy is such that you can do, you know, four days, day off, you can have two half days off, you could work five days, but come in late, leave early. The concept's really about reducing the amount of time you spend in the office, rebalancing, I guess. So here we are in, in dealing with uh, COVID-19. And I look at it as a great opportunity to completely change the way we work and live. What, how do you feel about it? No, I think you're absolutely right. Um, interestingly, we've had more large companies 
come to us since COVID-19 saying, how do we put a, a four day week in place than we had prior to that? And I think the reasoning for that is there were two real impediments to companies implementing four days, uh, four days working. One was trust. Can I trust my employees to do their job in four days rather than five? And then the other one was productivity. Most companies, if they're being really honest, in uh, service industries actually have no comprehension at all as to what constitutes productivity. We use time as the surrogate. I come in at nine, I leave at five, that's a productive day. Now, when you sent all your staff home as a consequence of COVID-19, you learned two things. One, you learned that you could trust them. There's a shock. Number two, you worked out that actually you had to work some measures of productivity, and then you found your staff were more productive at home. So those two impediments have now been overcome. People have recognized that flexible working, home working, actually does deliver better outcomes, both for the business and for employees. So I'm very hopeful that now people will say, actually, we're not going back to that we're going to rethink how we're gonna work going forward. And a four day week, especially as part of the recovery strategy for post COVID-19 economies, I think is a, it's a very useful tool in the unknown. I mean, I just love everything that you're doing. You're absolutely out there trying to revolutionize the way we work. And it also has a lot of other benefits like gender equality, climate effects. I want you to touch a little bit on these two, two sure. topics. Well, well, you know, one of the things we've all seen, isn't it? We've all got up in the morning and been able to see the hills that you never saw before, you know, the, see the Himalayas from Kathmandu. Now, when you actually look at it, um, as far as carbon emissions are concerned, in most developed economies, um, transportation, co um, commuting to work, is the generates about 35% of greenhouse emissions. Uh, so to give it a context, if, the, if America went on to a four day week, it would actually be the equivalent of taking 10 and a half million cars off the road every single year. So if in fact you reduce the working that you have a day off, what we find in research is people taking a day off actually have a low carbon footprint on the day they take off. They do things generally around the home. So there is major greenhouse gas benefits if we actually implement it. Now gender pay is another interesting one. And it, when we announced the four day week, um, you got differing reactions across the company. But uh, a whole bunch of people, all of them, mothers returning to work, went, result, we understand that. We understand time management. We've effectively you know, negotiated a four day uh, working week already. Sadly, four days pay going along with that. But we are actually already delivering as much as our colleagues who were working five days a week. So the key point here is that first of all, we're saying to working mothers coming back to the office, stop negotiating on time, negotiate on output you are worth a full working week if you can deliver you know, a full working week in four days. And of course you can. The second thing is we spend a lot of time trying to bring women up in our organizations. Now the problem actually is that the real impediment in my view is we don't make it okay for guys to get out of the office. The great thing about the four day week is we insist that all of our senior leaders, without exception, take the four day week. They have to walk the talk. They cannot send emails to work, make phone calls, do all the stuff that you would often do late in the evening or in your day off. You have to be seen to be working four days. Now what happens is that suddenly these senior guys who've never had a chance to be dads, never had a chance to spend time with their families, 
suddenly do. And, and the, the story that gets me is I have, a, I have a chap in one of our offices and he takes two afternoons off a week. And when he goes home, he spends time with his granddaughter and she comes around. They do grandfather, granddaughter stuff. They have tea together twice a week. When he tells the story about this, he cries. Now, that gives two things. One, we're giving people the freedom to get out. We're saying it's okay. Care responsibilities, family responsibilities, we're evening the playing field. We're making it okay. Much easier, therefore, for women to get to the, the C-suite. The other side of it, though, is that people recognize that this gives them a gift that is so precious. It, you know, you can, it's not more pay. It's not about more employee benefits. It's the benefit of time and time that you can use in something that's important to you. And that's what makes this work because that guy is going to do everything possible to keep his four day week. So basically, you're trying to be the new Henry Ford of the 21st century <laughs> and give back people their time and increase their productivity. <laughs> well, yes, look, uh, in a way, I mean, I, I, I will confess, you know, when I started this, this was a, it was an academic exercise, to be mm -hmm. brutally. What I was doing, I was, I thought, well, wouldn't it be a good idea to try an experiment? And this was the experiment of, you know, work four days, pay five, give me the same output. Which I actually give you so much courage for doing because that takes, that takes not, I mean, it's, there's a financial oh. risk there. That, I mean, it takes yeah, a lot of yeah, courage yeah, to but, do that. But, you know, seriously, what was the worst that was likely to happen? I was going to get a more empowered, engaged workforce. I was, I was banking on the fact that actually you know, it was going to work out broadly okay. But, but, but what happened is that we thought this would be a local interest story. We thought we'd get a, I don't know, a story in the local paper uh, in Auckland. And it suddenly went global on us. I mean, we were getting phone calls from all around the world. I think it's run now in 85 countries, I think the global audience last time somebody checked was, you know, four and a half billion people. Um, and here we are in, in uh, you, you know, 2020, so two years since we initiated the trial. And the phone keeps ringing and people keep talking about it and it keeps coming back up. So what that says to me and it, what it, it said to me very quickly was the way we work today isn't fit for purpose for the 21st century, point number one. And second point was, you don't get many chances to change the world. And this, for better or for worse, happens to be mine. And whilst I am quite sure that, you know, there will be other people who will step in and, and, and ultimately will, will probably be bigger drivers of, of this than I. I think if we have done one thing over the last two years, it's we've made the conversation mainstream. We've made it so Jacinda Ardern, our Prime Minister, you know, has not done much on the four-day week, but has come out in support eventually. Uh, uh, you know, you've got the uh, Finnish Prime Minister has come out uh, in, in favour, Serena Marin. You've got, uh, just last week, uh, a cross-party group of parliamentarians in the UK have again written to the Chancellor arguing for a four-day week. Um, you've got uh, Andrew Yang in um, America pushing for it. Um, you know, there is, a, there is, I think, a mainstream now that says that this is an opportunity and I think sooner or later we'll get to the tipping point. And I think COVID-19 has helped that process. Yeah, absolutely. And this is how I found you. I mean, I, I did some research on, uh, you know, on the work week and how it could be changed because that's kind of what I'm interested in. My whole philosophy is not necessarily, you know, I'm, I'm a solopreneur, right? So I can make my own hours, which you, your situation is completely different. But 
what I think people can do is figure out how to work fewer hours and be more productive. I am not saying you have to work for the weeks. I'm saying no. you have to do, do whatever it takes to get your work done, but do it in the least amount of time. That could yeah. be, you know, four hours a day. It could be six hours a day. It could be, you know, I'm, I'm talking to, I don't know if you know, um, Stefan Arsto with Tower, Tower Paddle Boards. Um, he's implemented a five hour work week, but you work every day, but you're done at one o'clock and then you're yeah, look, free I mean, to it, go it's, play. It, it is this there was a british survey uh later on which which i use quite a lot which is really saying that effectively um productivity again across the british workforce is generally about three hours a day interesting mm -hmm. uh, if you think back to uh, maynard Keynes said you could be for a sustainable life you had to be productive for what he thought would be 15 hours a week well just so happens that would appear to be what people are actually being productive on and the rest of time is filler mm -hmm. it might be we you know i we we found for example in our trial that when we checked how much time was spent surfing on the internet on the five most popular sites in new zealand non-work related we found when the four-day week was implemented the amount of time spent surfing dropped 35 percent now, you'd have expected 20% drop, 20% people out of the office, but it actually dropped 35%. Mm -hmm. So that's showing that there was a, there was a change in behavior. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and the other one that's quoted a lot, of course, is Microsoft in Japan. Right. Uh, the, you know, use Microsoft Teams, no more than five in a meeting, no more than half an hour per meeting and a 39.9% improvement in productivity. Yeah. You know, we, we like being busy at work. There is a difference between busyness <laughs> and productivity. <Yeah. laughs> and then there's the McKenzie study that showed that executives who work in a state of flow can get their 500 times more productive in just one day than working the whole week. Yeah. So if you can achieve that, that flow state with a team, and it, it again comes down to eliminating the distractions, which is what you found. Mm. Mm. Um, and there was another uh, old study from the Boston Consulting Group where executives took one day off a week. And again, they found that to be a lot more productive. So the science is there. The studies show oh. it. You show it. Why aren't we going there? <laughs> Uh, look, uh, look, I ask myself this question quite a lot. I th think one is that we're conditioned, right? Uh, I, was, I started my career in the city of London. You know, I had the 12-hour days, and if I went home before my boss, I was, I was a lightweight. So a lot of us are conditioned, people for around my age anyway, are conditioned that working longer equals working harder. And the next thing is I think that we have a lot of managers in business and we have very few leaders. And so what often happens is people go, well, why would I change it? What are, what's in it for me? If I change it and it goes wrong, that impacts on me. So actually it's way more comfortable, way more easy for me to just continue with the status quo. That's a management that, problem but, then, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. And that's where COVID's helped us because who'd have thought that you could send a whole company home and then work from home for, for six to eight weeks and then find that productivity was, the, was okay. And, and here in the UK, um, one of the, the CEO of one of the big banks here, the CEO of Barclays, came out and said, well, who'd have thought we could run a 70,000 person bank from the kitchen table? You know, <laughs> We're never going back to having large concentrations of staff in expensive buildings in London. It's just not going to happen. And, and I think that that's the thing that we needed to, to, to move thought processes and actually make leaders suddenly go, you know what? Actually, we can get this productivity. They've, we've made it safe for them because everybody's in the same boat. Um, but you're right, science absolutely shows 
that you will get better productivity. And wherever you are in the world, uh, I always find people come to me and they say, Andrew, might work in your company, but yeah, wouldn't work in either mine or they pick an industry that they will say will prove that it won't work in. And, and the tragedy for them is you're always able to say, well, funnily enough, XYZ company in that country is doing the four day week. It's working. Their productivity has gone up. Why aren't you? Some companies that are dealing with people, like some public companies, that you need that face-to-face -face interaction and you like customer calls, it would be harder to implement because then you know um, you don't have that requirement. But is it really harder or do you just put that on, no, on, on the no. customer service line and say, well, you're just open four days a week? Well, no, no, no. What, what you do is, is one of the things that we did right from the get-go, we have retail stores. We have 17 of them. Right? So we are, we're a classic example. We have to have face-to-face -face contact. Um, we, so we said a couple of things to our staff. We said, first of all, customer service is sacrosanct. We cannot have worse customer service as a consequence of this. Work out how you're going to do it. Now, actually, what that meant is they sat down and they said, we have to be fully staffed at the front end. We have to rotate people through. We might cross-train a few people. So... We're always going to have cover in all directions. What we found was bizarrely our customer service standards went up because suddenly there was better cross-training. If so-and-so was out of the office on coffee break or lunch or out on their day off, there was somebody else who could cover it because it was part of the norm. Um, and one of my favorite stories on this is, is an accounting firm in Australia that went on to the four-day week and... Having done that, they then the, the staff came back and said, well, actually, a few of us would like to work Saturday, Sunday. So they said, OK, and they redesigned how they handled clients. So instead of a person handling a client, they had a group of two or three handle the group. Uh, they've now gone to seven day week operations. Their customers love it because now a small business can get talk to an accountant at the weekend. And their customer service standards have improved. Um, there's another one. I think it's Gap put a little app in place in their shops that said you could pick which shift you worked and you could trade your shift with another um, uh, member of staff. And their sales went up 10%. Because when people work when they want to work and get the breaks when they want, guess what? They're more empathic, enthusiastic, you know, they Happy deliver up. better service. Now, who'd have thought people working when they want, feeling more rested, would deliver better service? There's a crazy idea. But it's true, right? I love it. So you are in between the UK and New Zealand, and obviously European way of life is quite a bit different than American, and so is New Zealand and Australia. I mean, I have people coming to me from Australia into that whole burnout state we work too much you know we burn out so i know it happens there as well not so sure about new zealand so much but um basically what, what i'm getting at is when is america gonna catch up <laughs> interesting don't know i mean clearly on the spectrum you have uh places like you know holland germany um northern europe which are already generally on average working somewhere between you know, 28 and 32 hours a week. Um, and then you go further along the spectrum and you have New Zealand, Australia, UK, and then on a different planet, somewhere over there is, is the United States. And um, interestingly, so I, I, was, I, was in, uh, I was in Washington earlier on this year in the days when you could travel. Um, and I was listening to, uh, I think it was the State of the Nation address by the Chamber of Commerce and U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And, and I think that's generally viewed probably the Republican end of the spectrum, uh, very much, you know, traditional view on business. Yet what was interesting is that when they, they got some guys on stage talking, the issues that they were facing were the same. How do I attract and retain great staff? Um, 
uh, how how do I ensure that that you know I'm going to get the productivity outputs that I need? How do I maintain customer service? How do I do that? Now, of course, the world's changed a little bit. How do I do that in the context of full employment? And the answer, of course, is the four day week. It be, we've got the gig economy in America. The the work, you know, here's a great idea: work when you want, which is not true. In gig, you work when the gig owner wants, and if you don't make yourself available, you will progressively get worse and worse shifts. Um, equally, I think COVID showed us uh, that the desire for flexibility, which was pre prevalent in the US, has a dark side in that you have a lot of people who are therefore outside of minimum wage, uh, holiday pay, sick pay, health, um, health benefits. Now, those are the things that we take for granted in the rest of the civilized world. Um, doesn't happen in America. But yet you saw very, very quickly what happened when people who put flexibility above actually those protections ended up out on their ear looking for work no you know you had uber i think arguing arguing in michigan that people should be treated as employees while simultaneously suing the state of california for treating them as employees it's fabulous stuff so um it will happen but it's going to take a little longer uh, because i think the culture in america uh you know is not as um i'm going to use the word paternalistic as it is elsewhere we believe in in in, in new zealand in the uk in having things like universal health care we believe in having pensions we believe that it's important that people uh have have time off and the economic arguments for that are are substantial um it's going to take quite a seismic shift in america for that to change but i'm always encouraged that every day you hear of another company in the united states that's going you know what i think we might go to four days or we might go to flexible or and doing it in a way that looks after their employees so i think there is hope but it's it's going to inevitably be slow so i have a lot of work ahead of me <laughs> you have an awful lot of work ahead of you um, uh. <laughs> but you know that's that but but it will happen if you'd have asked me you know honestly two years ago would i be sitting here talking to you now about this mad idea i'd have said no not a chance and yet here we are so if that's happened in two years, a lot can happen in two years. Absolutely. We just need to get a little help with the people promoting all that hustle culture to stop promoting that <laughs> and get a little bit more publicity to people like you. Yeah, look, I think you make a very good point. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Elon Musk, very, you know, known for, you know, do the 100 hour week, nobody changes the world not working 100 hours true he's probably right actually i mean entrepreneurs that's probably right the point is though the guy on his factory floor isn't getting the rewards that he's getting right you know he isn't getting himself up to having x hundreds of billions of dollars that guy on a woman on the factory floor um is getting a basic wage uh they want to you know have enough to have a decent standard of living. They want enough to make sure that they can properly educate their kids. They want to maybe take a, the odd holiday. They need to put some money aside for retirement, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they, are not, they don't get the benefit. We're borrowing those people from their lives. And we've got to recognize the fact that for them, the gift of time is probably very, very valuable indeed because it helps get that balance back. Now, the alternative is say, right, work 100 hours a week, but pay them the same as Elon Musk. Well, no, I'm not gonna do that. So if you're not gonna do that, you have to remember that this is, this is you've gotta look at this through the 
perspective of the person who's working for you, not through your own perspective. And I we, think that's where we go wrong. And you know what I think th there could be a risk, and you might have seen this, so um, tell me if you have, but I, would, I, could, I could see how a company could say, let's go to a four hour work week, let's figure out how we can increase our productivity and decrease the distractions, and let's see if we can extend that back to the four, five, five hour, to a five day work week, and yeah. keep the same productivity. Have you seen that happen? Well, uh, it's one of the arguments my board put to me when I put the four-day week in place. <laughs> Look, it, it, it just doesn't happen, right? It doesn't happen. And, and it, the, the, the rationale is that what you're doing here is you're recognizing that rested employees produce more. You're recognizing that people with time to think are more creative. Um, and you you make them their whole interaction with the business more enthusiastic and, and and more empowered. If you just think cracking the whip, having met, worked out that you can do more productivity, and then trying to keep that pace up the whole time, uh, what happens is 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 you know you crash and burn. Put it a different way. Um, I know that I can sprint after I've done an eight hundred meters. And I can do a sprint on the last 200 meters and that's fine. But what I can't do is I can't keep that sprint up, that pace up for the 800 meters. And that's exactly the same when you're thinking um, in how you work. You know, if you think about it in any form of sport, you can raise your performance for a small period of time, but you can't hold it for the whole time. So this is what we're trying to do with people saying, actually, have a bit more rest, have the time, raise the performance. But if you try and make them do it the whole time, they'll burn themselves out and productivity will eventually slump. Absolutely agree with you. So what are, so, what are some of the, for the US um, audience, what are some of the companies or people that are behind your philosophy here? Besides me, you have me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, the, well, um, it, it's, it's for the most part, uh, I think it's fair to say, for the most part, it's smaller businesses uh, across uh, America. But, you know, an interesting one I thought was Shake Shack. So Shake Shack introduced a, a four-day week. Now, why it did that was precisely because it couldn't manage to attract and retain the right people to, you know, run their businesses. Yeah. And yeah. they saw that there was an opportunity to, to actually, you know, uh, attract, retain good quality workers in an industry that after all, isn't that sexy. Yeah. And that's, that was our problem too, by the way, we, we are, we are possibly the most unfashionable business you've ever come across and yet people will now come and work for us because they look at it and say actually this is quite progressive business so you know it, it, when you look at it what well, the problem in america is is in general terms in in some of the tech areas you will see businesses that are doing it um but we haven't yet seen the shift into big companies other than you know shake shack being a de relatively decent sized one that actually has made the shift um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I wish there would be more. Obviously, Microsoft has thought about it offshore. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that they will bring that into the US soon. Um, I think that's inevitable because of its success offshore. Um, but we need a name of that caliber. I think, you know, you ask, well, how do you, how do you make a change in the States? That's the sort of company that we need to see doing it because it then makes it safe for all those boards and chief executives out there to go well well they did it if they've done it where it's okay for us to it to do it and i would argue that whoever does that first is has a lot to benefit from it absolutely look i couldn't agree more that's uh, one of the things i i say to uh, business leaders around the world is I say that, look, uh, there are a couple of things here. This is a train that's coming. It's not the train we expected. 
Um, you know, we, it's not even going where we thought it was going to go. But actually, your choice is very simple. Either get on it or run behind it. And your biggest risk is that your biggest competitor does this first. So, again, let's use Microsoft. If you are a software engineer in Japan, do you work for Microsoft or their biggest competitor now? You know, assuming the job's the same, you're going to do Microsoft every day of the week. Mm -hmm. So in an environment where we need to, and that's true post-COVID, where we need to attract and retain great people, you've actually got to think about this, that this is an, is an offer which costs you nothing, you will get better productivity. Um, we'll give you benefits you never realize. For example, our sick days have halved since we brought in the four day week. So we've, we've got smaller offices, we've got lower power bills, we've got lower staff turnover. We've got a whole pile of benefits that drop off the back of it. Um, we're able to attract great people. We got fantastic publicity. You move first in your space, that's what you will get. You go second, it's all fabulous and interesting, but they did it first. And so companies should really be thinking about this. This is a, an opportunity to set yourself apart um, and also to reposition your company for the future. You remember, if people have got a day off a week, they can use that day to upskill, retrain, um, all of those things which otherwise they'd be trying to fit in around working for you or in the evenings, both of which would have an adverse impacts on your productivity. So, you know, you can get a, a more engaged, enthusiastic, but actually better trained workforce out of this. And uh, the Germans did it very, very successfully in the GFC. And they have a thing called Kusabait, which uh, was, was short working but it was linked as well to spending time in the fifth day, upskilling and retraining. Such a good time right now. Thank you so much, Andrew. This is very inspiring for a lot of companies as well as entrepreneurs. How do we come out of this crisis stronger and better? I think it's, that's a great opportunity to, to reevaluate how we work. Yeah, no, absolutely. Totally agree with you. And, and I have every hope that the more enlightened leaders out there are now looking at this now and saying, this is the chance, this is our time. And, and I think we have a, an opportunity to build something great out of what has been a very difficult time. Couldn't agree more. I'm super excited. Tell me a little bit about uh, your plans. You, you like new, new plans as well as your book. Uh, well, I'll do the book first. Um, uh, the four day week by, uh, uh, Andrew Barnes with Stephanie Jones. Um, I wrote it because I couldn't drink that much coffee uh, in that uh, I would get call after call after call after call from people who'd say, oh, we read about it, Andrew. Jim, could we, could we buy you a coffee? And you go, oh, my God, no, no. And so uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put down uh, the ideas, the, the concepts, the, what we did. Right from the get-go, when we started this, we we said that we would share everything that we did. So we created this website, the four day, four day week .com. Uh, We put all our research up there, our contracts, our white paper, the stories, like everything that we did. And we said to anybody, you know, if you want anything about this, just, just go to the website, have a look. Um, and that, and obviously then the phones were ringing. And I, so I wrote the book primarily to, mean that when I have a conversation, people have read the book and that means that I can, we can cut to the heart of how you implement this. All the profits from the book are going to research, global research. So one thing we did is we built a, an academic uh, panel uh, from um, Oxford University, Harvard, um, Auckland, uh, LSE, uh, and others now, we're adding universities uh, around the world. Um, and the idea behind that, on uh, Stanford, and the idea behind it is that one, we can help to coordinate global research 
Um, so we will get we get uh, PhD students coming to us saying want to research this. We're able to direct them to where it helps increase the body of evidence. So that's important. Uh, we're also um, creating again a, a little consultancy unit again profits to go to global research, which will help people to implement uh, the four day week and. Uh, enable them to be accredited. Now, the reason we're doing that is to give confidence to employees. To be accredited, this is not a program where I find a way for you to be more productive and then I fire 20% of you. It's about having that philosophy that says, what I'm trying to do here is get that better productivity, but with the people that I've got, but with less time. That's smart. And so we're doing we're doing that as well, and um, you know the rest of the time I, uh, I I I spend a lot of time talking about it. I stuffed up my own four day week as a consequence. Oh um, no! <laughs> <laughs> so you know that's that's life. But but I, as I said earlier, and I and I, and I genuinely mean, it, um, you don't get many chances to change the world, uh, and I'll, I'll share a. A story, if I may, my, my partner and I did the, the Peking Paris uh, car rally last year. And um, as we drove across the border into, into Siberia and Russia, the phone rang and uh, one of our, my, our team in, in, in Auckland said, uh, you've just been name checked by the prime minister of Russia, who has he's seen the perpetual guardian trial, uh, Andrew Barnes, and he said he thinks it could be the future for Russia. And we thought, well, that's interesting. And then the phone rang again and they said, well, where are you? And we said, well, we're heading up to this city that you've never heard of called Novosibirsk, apparently the third largest city in Russia, in the middle of Siberia. And they said, okay, well, Moscow Television are sending some TV crews. Um, so we got to the end of the day and I did two or three interviews with Russian television. And, and we thought that's fine. And as we left Russia, not a few weeks later, uh, there was an announcement that the parliament was drafting legislation to bring in a four day week. Well done. Congratulations. Now, you actually look at that and go, I don't know what will happen at the end, you know, how far it will go. But the fact that this went from idea to parliament taking some action as a consequence of a trial by a little company in New Zealand was quite humbling. Pretty cool. And, and that's probably the point at which you suddenly go, well, actually, maybe we can change the world. That is your legacy, huh? Well, maybe, maybe. It's not a not, bad one. It's, it's not a bad one at all. No, not at all. So what's on the books for you for the next, let's say, six weeks? When are you coming to the United States? <laughs> uh, well, of course, when they let us all back in. I mean, we were due to literally, uh, I was meant to be talking at Stanford um, and NYU again, uh, which would just, we had that canceled just as COVID hit. So uh, eventually when the borders reopen, we'll be back. Um, in the intervening period, I'm spending some time in the UK. I have uh, young children or children at school here in the UK. So... I, uh, I've, I've fled one of the safest countries in the world to come to, uh, to, come to the UK and um, spend time with my kids and see my dad. And I have a business over here. And I'm happy to say uh, on Friday, we announced that they were going on to a four-day week. Um, they, they had a target to achieve uh, you know, some, some level of activity this year. They did it and said, right that's it so you're on a four-day week from from now awesome. so it's you know that's 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 why i'm here um and of course the weather's fabulous and, and you know as it always is in england <laughs> 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 well thank you so much andrew i am super excited to have connected with you and thank you for sharing time with the unhustle movement here and the unhustle audience um i'm I would be following you around and sharing some more of your research with um, with people. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help spread the word in 
the states let me know I, I certainly will i will certainly will it's it's great to have the chance to talk and and certainly i'm looking forward to uh, getting back a uh, getting back across the ditch at some point in time <laughs> and uh, and connecting with with all the people doing a lot of great work to try and change our world for the better in the us Thank you so much, Andrew, and uh, enjoy your evening in the UK. Same way. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.